Good morning everybody, this is Jean True Love here from True Love Quotes For You. Um, I'm doing a tutorial today but um, I have some exciting news and it sort of is an inspiration for my tutorial. <laughs> Silly little thing. Um, over the weekend our fourth son um, out of our ten children gave, um, his wife gave birth to a, our twelfth grandchild, a little baby girl. Um, it was a beautiful home birth um, with a midwife, just lovely, calm, wonderful, an eight pound, eight ounce uh, little baby girl, our seventh granddaughter. We now have five grandsons and seven granddaughters. Um, Cosette Hazel True Love, such a pretty name. Um, all is well. We're so thrilled. We're so thrilled. Um, our son and his wife are very calm and uh, it was just beautiful. It really was. So with little girls in mind, <laughs> I came up with this tutorial. Now, oh, I wanted to show you. Mm, I don't know where it is. I have been, I'm making a tea towel, hanging tea towels. I've made, um, it's in the other room. I've actually made hanging tea towels with um, like a snap closure, you know, over your oven pole or your dishwasher pull. Um, but I was thinking about if you don't have or if you don't want to use a hammer to hammer in a snap or a tool to hammer in a, uh, to, to, to a special tool um, or a magnet closure or to make a buttonhole and a button, sometimes it can be a bit of a pain. Something so very simple. And I'm thinking, how can I make a, 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 um, a hanging thing that you just sort of don't tie on, but it's pretty? So I did go on Pinterest and I have made similar to this before with with ties but these were so very cute and i sort of perfected it so this is what we are going i want to show you now i'm not in my kitchen because it's dirty and i didn't want to show this on my dirty oven but look what do you think <laughs> a tea towel little tea towels made like little dresses in honor of my little cosette and my other little grandchildren so this is what we're, my tutorial is about. All we're doing is we're using one tea towel. These are linen tea towels. This is a flat, a, um, terry cloth tea towel and a little bit of fabric, um, a piece of interfacing and some bias binding. And that is it. And I quite like these because it's an, you actually have two sides to your tea towel. You tie them on. Um, with the side ties and they're so pretty you won't want to use them I mean are you going to use these they're so pretty but these are some of the ones that I was experimenting and um, this was my first one I made and this I didn't put interfacing in and it was a bit of a smaller one which I quite like actually you might want to even make your pattern a bit smaller but what the, the one I've made is this pattern it's a little bit bigger and it has interfacing in it and I quite like that they're just so pretty a little bit of binding I've sort of perfected it as I've gone along this was my first one this was my second one this was my third one um, the one I'm showing you does not have pockets but a pockets so simple you could just put little pockets on if you wanted to um, this is what I'm actually showing you the tutorial on this little um, for it's like so sweet for like even a, a little beach kitchen um, it has anchors and and um, life buoys and sailboats and a, and a tea towel literally what you need is a tea towel and if you want to trim it up real pretty you could even put lace or rickrack I mean it's a tea towel right um, so anyway that's our tutorial for today in honor of little girls, my little granddaughter having been born. So this is what it is. Um, it's just a nice little tutorial. It's not hard. The only fiddly part is you're going to find this um, little neck here. But it's not even hard because I really showed you how to do it slowly and well. And the rest of it, it, it just comes together. So as I said, a little bit of trim. You can go to town on them. Um, go get yourself a tea towel. Purchase tea towel. I didn't even take off the things. Purchase tea towel. Obviously, they're all washable. I would think if you want to wash them and, um, you know, after they, they get a bit grubby, I don't know, um, you want a, a like hot iron, just a, just an iron on these, just to make, make it sweet. But you might not even want to do it. I was thinking, on the next few tutorials, which I have actually um, filmed and made a few little bits, they're more for, they're, they're, um, 
they're not quilts as such. I, I have an idea in the beginning of the year what I'm going to do um, after the, the uh, gift giving season is gone. Um, the next few tutorials are little presents, are little gifts. So this is a little, this could be a little present. I've ca concentrated on a few presents the last few tutorials. But in the beginning of the year, I'm going to get back a little bit more to quilting, some blocks. I have an idea. I'll, I'll run it past you. But that's for then. So the next few tutorials, you can look forward to the little gifts. This little gift today, uh, or to make for yourself a sweet, sweet, sweet little hanging tea towel. So I do hope you enjoy this and my tutorial to come. Thanks again, folks. Okay, here's my tutorial. To make my little, lovely little dress for my oven, <laughs> my dishwasher, um, what we're going to be needing is just a few things. I've just pulled from my stash a, a hunk of fabric, which I'm going to cut my pattern out of. We're going to be needing a piece of interfacing, iron-on interfacing, um, about that big. I'd say 12 inches by 12 inches, something like that. We're going to be needing the tea towel, of course. Now, as you saw and as I was saying, there are um, terry cloth tea towels. This happens to be my two examples were, were my linen, my linen type tea towels um, that are a little bit larger. This tea towel measures about 28 inches by about 18 inches. And this will make, obviously, a little bit of a larger, longer uh, little dress. So we're going to be needing a tea towel. And it comes out of the package fairly um, uh, folded. Um, what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll, I'll press that really good. I'll iron it really good in half. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut right on the fold line. I'm going to cut this in half my tea towel. What we're also going to be needing is um, a package of bias tape extra wide double fold. I'm using red for my um, my ribbons and my neck piece as you've seen on the others. And I don't know, I may or may not be uh, putting a piece of rickrack on it. Again, I'm just pulling fat, I'm just pulling colors, the red as the tie and maybe a little bit of blue rickrack, I'm not sure. Um, I'm not going to be putting the pockets on this one. You can all, by all means, you can put the pockets on two little squares cut in an oval. Um, if you want a pocket, you can put a pocket on. But the most important thing is, is our pattern. Now, I don't, I, hopefully this will make a little bit of sense. Um, what I had done is I took a piece of, uh, just a piece of paper, piece of a uh, copy paper, and I did have to add another piece of paper to it. As you can see, I've taped it to, to, to get this, to get this overall piece. Now, what I've done is I actually I actually have marked the, the dimensions. The let me just show you. The um, this is the pattern here, as you can see. This is how it's it makes up. So this piece here, what I did is I actually I folded it in half, and then I folded it in half again. But that might be a little bit confusing. So I'm giving you the measurements of my pattern here. This is, overall, this piece is 11, in, 11 inches, just a piece of paper, 11 inches. And then I had to add some, so overall, from this point to this point, it's 10 and a half inches, from side to side. Our bodice, waistline piece, is 7 inches. And then our arm holes are five inches, our little sleeves. So basically what I've done is, if you can see, I've just cut out about an inch and a quarter on each side of my folded paper, if that makes sense. And then all I did is I cut out about a three inch, from this point to this point, a three inch hole. So hopefully, um, if, you, if you can stop the video and you can see this, um, just two pieces of paper together, seven inches for our waist, five inches for our sleeve, and a three inch diameter for our neckline. So there's your pattern for our project here. Um, so now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to just go out and I'm going to cut, I'm going to, just, I'm going to cut my fabric and a little trick <clears throat> that I have here. I have, see, I have yards and yards and yards and yards and yards. But literally, how much do you need? A, a, a quarter of a yard? No, about a third of a yard. 
about a third of a yard. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my two pieces of fabric for my pattern, okay? But I'm going to put them, to cut them, I'm going to put the right, the, um, the right sides together, actually. I'm not going to do it, I'm not going to cut it like this. I'm going to cut it the right sides together because that's actually how we're going to, to sew it. We're going to sew the right sides together. So it's just a little trick because if you cut, you, if you cut this way, the wrong sides together, like you think you would do on the pattern, this might not equal this one. And so when you flip them over to cut, to sew them, they might not match. They just might little be a little bit off. So that's just a little trick. I'm going to be sewing. I'm going to be taking the right sides of my fabric and putting them together. And then I'm going to be cutting my pattern out as well as cutting my interfacing out. And then I'll be cutting my, um, I'll be cutting my, uh, my tea towel in half. And then I'll show you what we do from there. So as you can see here, I'm ready to cut my pattern out. What I've done is I've taken my two pieces of fabric right sides together, and then I've actually taken my piece of interfacing, ironing side down, or the, the, the um, shiny side down, because I'm just going to actually literally take this back over to the ironing board after I cut it and, and iron this onto this one piece here. So I have a paper pattern, <clears throat> and what I am going to do is I'm going to just pin this onto my three layers and I'm going to cut this out and then I'm going to take this over to my ironing board and having having um, ironed on my ironing on facing to this piece here. So I've cut out the outside of my, my uh, little bodice here and what I'm going to be doing is I'm just going to fold it in half along there and you can actually feel from this point of the circle to that point of the circle I'm just going to it, it, it doesn't have to be incredibly exact because it's, it's you know it's not you, you, your pattern's not incredibly exact um, whether that's a perfect circle or not it's it's fine um, and there is our little bodice all cut out so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over and I'm going to fix my interfacing to my fabric so I've, I've ironed on my ironing, my interfacing to my pattern. And just a little, uh, just a little thing, I'm sure you know, um, when you're using <clears throat> iron-on interfacing, you really want a, a nice hot iron, dry iron, and really, you're not, you're not going to scorch your fabric at all. You just really want to hold your iron on for quite a long time onto your interfacing. You know, you think, oh, you know, you, you, you iron it like this, and oh, it's, a t it's, it's affixed, it's attached, but the, you really just want to hold that on so that glue becomes, this, this is absolutely permanent, permanent, permanent. I mean, you could, if you wanted to, try to peel that off, but that's the whole point. You want this to become one with the fabric. Um, after repeated washings and everything, this really wants to be glued on very, 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 very well. So I've done that, and again, because we've set, we've we've cut them exactly the same size, right now, I'm going to go over to my machine and I'm going to flip it over this side. I'm going to turn over the not the the um, free edge, not the one with the interfacing about half an inch. I'm going to turn that over on each side here and down to this side here put a pin see I'm using pins and what you're going to be doing is from this point on to this corner a quarter of an inch yeah maybe a little bit more this isn't really quilting as such. This is sort of garment making. So whatever your, it's whatever size you want it to end up. Quarter of an inch, a little bit more. From this point, reinforce, reinforce, down to this corner, pivot to your armhole, pivot down here, pivot and down. You're just going to be stitching along this arm sleeve here on each side. You want to reinforce that, come down, pivot all the way down to this fold here. Forget about your neckline. You're just wanting to do that. And then what we're going to do is you're going to clip in your corners. You're going to clip and you're just going to take off your corners. 
your four corners, and then you're going to turn it inside out and iron it really, really well. So I'm just going to go over and I'm going to stitch along, stitch along, clip, and then iron it. So I've stitched along here on each side, having turned that in, and now what I'm going to do is, as I said, I'm just going to clip off these corners right, at the, right to the stitching and clip into that corner there, just to make the turning slightly easier. Just clip right into the, careful not to obviously, oh, those scissors stink, um, obviously not to cut into the stitching, just so to, when you go to turn it inside out, your your it's a little bit easier to turn now i'm just going to turn this inside out and i have reinforced my my corner so you want to do that so it, it you, you're not you know your your stitches don't come out you just want to turn this and then you're just going to poke these you're just going to poke your sleeves out your little corners here there's your one sleeve you want to poke that out you want to get your little poking tool but be very careful Poke this one out, poke that one out. I'll go over to my ironing board now, <clears throat> having poked everything out, and I'm going to just iron this down. I'm going to stitch this, I mean, I'll press it down really, really good. There you go. I'm going to press that really, really, really good. Keep pressing and uh, pressing it iron, and then I'll show you how we do the actual um, neckline here. So I've, I've pressed this really, really well, and as you see, because we turn that on the inside, this is nice, it's just turned right under, and as you can see, hopefully you can see, I've just actually top stitched from about this point, just about quarter of an inch all the way around, just on the two sides, just to make a nice little top stitched, top stitched edging. Now, um... What we want to do is you want to see, you might, yours might be absolutely perfect, but probably not because it shifts just a hair. You want to make sure that your opening for your head, um, your head, it actually matches. Do you see how this one, this piece is just a little bit off? There, I can see, I want them, all the edges, what I'm saying is to match. So I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to trim it just to make sure these three edges of the interfacing, the backing, and my front. This is my front piece. This is the front because the piece that has the interfacing is the front of our little dress here. The piece that has the interfacing, the longer piece. So I just want to make sure it's pretty good that we've cut, because we've cut everything pretty exact, you just might have to trim it up just a hair. Now, this is where we're going to be doing our neck facing with our binding. I would just pull off from our binding probably about, well, I, I don't know what it is, but I, I take about maybe a foot just to be sure. Now, as I, if you've seen this before, I'm just going to press that, get those folds out of it. As you've seen before, and I'm sorry if you've been watching me and you, I'm repeating myself, but the, the, the bias binding, this bias binding, has a front and a back. You will see that there is a, just a slight larger backing of this binding so that when you actually stitch on the front near this near this edge of the front as it were it's automatically going to catch the back and so what we're doing you cut your edge off real square what I do is with the back of the tape the larger bit of the tape I'm going to go over to the back this is the front this is the back, it doesn't make any difference, but say you, you, want it, you want it in your mind, to the back edge, and I'm just going to place that as we've done on our other projects. You're not going to pull it. You might, this one you might want to pin. You're just going to be stitching that little edge right along there, having, I mean, and this is literally bite by bite. This is just literally just ever so slowly 
ever so slowly, not pulling it. You just want to go and fold that right up, fold the, the curve of your neckline right into the fold of our binding. And it may, because it's such a, a very large curve, it's a circle, it, you may get a few, um, not tucks, but you may get a few um, fold lines. And I mean, it's a tea towel. Come on, folks. Um, and so, and you will, you probably get a little bit of a fold line, but you can do this. You can push it right around. And then as you see, you see, you're, the, you're, when you stitch it on the front, on the edge, bite by bite, just half inch by half inch by half inch, just pushing that right around on that circle, you have a finished, it will catch, it will catch on the back, you don't have to worry about that, you will have a finished neckline. Now when you come to this end here, I don't know, I didn't know how to do it, um, I just sort of folded this piece in, hopefully you can see it without my ugly hands, I folded that over and I just sort of when I got to that point, and then I just sort of tucked it in like that. Hopefully you can see that. Yeah, I just sort of, I just sort of folded it and yeah, it was okay. Um, just like that. And then just, and then just top stitched it and then just went back and forth there. So I'm going to, but I have to change my thread. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to change my thread to, to red actually for this little bit of this little piece here. So hopefully you can see that I've I've done my binding, um, and I I was fair pretty careful. This bit this is such an easy project. It's not even funny. This bit is a little bit fiddly, and you might get frustrated. But by all means, use your pins and literally half an inch, quarter of an inch at a time, just going just ever so slowly. I, this is the back. I just sort of turned it around. I did catch. Uh, look. You catch it all on the, oh, I didn't catch it there, you, you catch it all on the, on the back side, um, and it makes a nice little, it makes a nice little collar there. So now, we put that aside, I've ironed my thing, these, these, um, fold lines really stay in quite a lot, but anyway, so I've ironed my, to my fold, and what I'm going to do is just, I'm going to cut this tea towel in half, like that and this is the front of our skirt and actually I leave this um I leave this on this uh from the manufacturer that's fine um now I might or may not I'm not quite sure um as I said before um I think I will I'm going to just go over um I'm not going to put pockets on this one uh but I'm just going to go over and probably I'll pin it probably about because this is our hem, just about four inches, three and a half, four inches up from the top, up, up from the bottom hem. Yeah, just to add a little bit of a blue interest to my skirt. I'll just go along with a wavy stitch. If you didn't have a wavy stitch, perhaps just a zigzag stitch. And all I do is I just cut it, I, I just make it a little bit longer, and then I'll just turn it over. i just turn it over there. Um, even it's the raw edge. It's okay. Hopefully that was in. Hopefully that was in the frame. Yeah. If it was, I'm sorry about that. I'm nattering along. Um. Yeah. So. Oh, it's a little bit crooked. Yeah. You know me. Um. I didn't measure. Oh, geez. Um. So yeah. So I'm just doing a. I'm just doing a little bit of rick rack with a little bit of a wavy stitch. I'll, and then I'll show you. Oh, I might as well show you right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to gather this top edge. I'm just going to gather it now. What you do is you do a long basting stitch and you pull the ends. If you if you wanted to actually perhaps pleat your top edge, here's the center. You can t you can t you could just maybe I'll pleat it. I might just pleat it for 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 a change. Um, you just sort of go back. I think I will. I think I'm going to pleat this. Now the the purpose the the end goal is to make this towel to be able to fit this bodice, right? We want a gathered skirt, just like that. So I think what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna come along and I'm gonna pleat it, but I'm just gonna sew on my rickrack for now. So I've sewn on my rickrack, just turning the edges in on there and catching it with a wavy stitch. And what I've done is, actually on this tea towel, it's ideal, I'll do it on both of them, is I've made it, because it has these um, the, this design on it, 
what I've actually done is I've just turned in pleats. I don't know if you can see this. All I've done is I've turned in, this pleat goes outside and I've, I've pinned it, and then these two pleats come on the inside. What if you can see this? So there's my piece of my toweling. I've just bought over because I can, I have a guideline. I'll just bring over this pink, this red, just a pleat, just about half inch on each side. There's that one coming this way, and that one coming this way, and this one going inside to make this pleat right down the middle. Your tea towels will be different. Maybe you can mark a guideline in the middle and do pleats. I quite like pleats better than gathering, because sometimes you pull that basting stitch and it all comes out and it doesn't work. So our chief goal, what's our goal? Is our goal is to be, oh, so what I'm going to do is my... I've jumped ahead of myself. I'm going to go over to my machine and I'm going to stitch across the top to secure those pleats. But also what I'm going to do is on the actual pleat itself, hopefully you can see, on this pleat itself, I'm going to go down about an inch and a half on the outside here, like a top stitching, just to stitch down those pleats on the edge of the fold. I'm just going to stitch down about an inch and a half. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six stitching lines about down to about an inch and a half. Now the point, the, the, the important thing is here is when you're stitching you want to make sure that your top edge is nice and straight. That's important when you're making your pleats. You want your you know, so, so sort of bring your tea towel in like this, so you're not like, you know, it's not sort of like this. Make it so it's nice, the size that you want it to be for our bodice. To make that top edge, see how that matches up on my, my line there? You're just going to stitch it right across, right across there, and look. There is our top edge of our bodice for our skirt and my pleat my stitch lines are going to come down about an inch and a half. I'm going to do that on the front of my skirt and I'm going to do that on the back and then all we're going to do is we're going to attach our bodice. So hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. Uh, I thought I'd come over to my machine and actually show you. I've st we've pinned our pleats, correct? We've pinned our pleats and we want to keep our towel as, as sort of as, as small as possible. You might even want to almost put like a rubber band here to keep this small like that. Or maybe not a rubber band. Or just pin it. Because what the idea is you want to keep it. You don't want it to be like this because then you get all messed up trying to stitch your pleats down. So I've, I've done a couple. I've come along and I've, I've made it nice and square is it here. I've stitched along the top edge and I've begun, hopefully you can see, I've begun stitching down my pleats. I've started about an inch and a half along. I've stitched down this one and this one and this one. Now I'm going to come along here and, oh where's my thread? I'll just come here. I don't have to pull my thread because it's on the back. And I'm going to just come along and I'm going to back stitch and just stitch that pleat down there. It might be a little tiny bit more work than gathering the top edge, but it, and it's a different look. You have pleats instead of gathers. But so you can do whatever you want. If you if you've gathered before, by all means, then then gather your top edge. But I quite like this because I, I don't know gathering to me sometimes. I like I like this more um tailored look. So here here's my last pleat. I want to make sure it's all folded in real nice. Nice and um, straight. Now I'm going to start. Oh, my thread. My thread. My thread keeps unwinding. It's crazy. Thank goodness for my automatic feeder. Oh, it didn't work. Oh, not, not thank goodness. Um, there we go. So, so um, I'm going to just. Oh, gonna, I'm just going to get messed up here. <laughs> there we go. So keeping it nice and straight, you probably want a pin. There we go. I'm just finishing, just back stitch, just finishing that last pleat there up to my edge. And there we have our pleated skirt. I'm going to be doing that 
to the, there we go, and then when it flares out, you have a lovely pleat, you see? So you can either gather your top edge to make it to seven inches or whatever it is, six and a half inches, or you can pleat it like I did. So I've finished making my pleated skirt, my front pleated skirt, and my back pleated skirt. Now, what we're going to be doing is you want to, you want to find the front of your bodice, which is the back is where your, your binding was. Your front is here. So what we're going to be doing is we can, the, the front edge of the, um, the, the middle edge of our, on this one, because we can tell because of the design, is right about there, and then it matches. So what we're going to be doing is we're just going to be flipping over our bodice so the right sides of our top go to the, the, the top of the apron. You're going to just be matching the edges up from the top, from the, um, top of the apron over. You've made, it, you've made it so it nice and it fits nice. Just do your edges first and then pull up your apron bit to make sure that the top is nice and square because again it has the tendency to to flare out so you just want to make sure everything is nice and square your des designs will match your top edge will match so you're going to pin that like that or you could you put your pins in however you want um, and then what we're going to do is you're going to stitch in it's about half an inch from that point of your turning to there you just want to stitch it, and then when we, then when it's done, the we're just this this turned over flap gets stitched, and we have no raw edges on our apron on our um, tea towel whatsoever. So you just want to match the edges of your tea towel to the edges of your bodice. I'm going to do that the front and the back, and then I'll show you how we're going to attach our uh, binding and our ties, and our little thing is done. Amazing. I've stitched my front tea towel skirt to the bodice. I've stitched my back tea towel skirt to the bodice. And what we have ended up with, uh, because it's a, I, I did it quite a lot, it's about half an inch. And actually, what did I do? What you want to come back and do is I actually reinforced that nice straight seam. I did it twice. But we have this pretty bulk. We have a, 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 a it's not a pretty bulk, it's a bulk. <laughs> it's pretty much. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take it, I'm going to trim that edge. Be careful not to, to, to um, cut your apron, your um, tea towel on the back here. I'm just going to trim that bulk of those pleats to about quarter of an inch. And then just clip those corners off. Because now what we're going to do, I'm going to do that on the, t the front and the back. I've reinforced this stitching here. Just going to come along and take off that bulk of fabric there. Just clip those corners in just slightly. Because now what we want to do is we want to take our folded edge. Oh, my top stitching. Oh, yeah, you might have to pull your top stitching out a little bit. Oh, yeah, caught. Remember we, oh, mate, Jean. Remember we top stitched along here. There's just a, little, a few, a few um, stitches, yeah, of top stitching that we don't want. I thought I thought I had, um, yeah, there. You just might want to, remember when I told you to top stitch the, the bodice, just take out that, that those few stitches of, of top stitching. Yeah, because what we're now wanting to do, it works really nice and perfect. What we're going to be doing now is we're just going to take that folded edge right over, look, and it folds right over really lovely on that, 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 stitched seam. Now, if you're wonderful and if you're super, you can go and you can hand sew that right along there. Well, ain't nobody got time for that. So what I'm going to do is on the... Uh, how can I explain this to a beginner? Okay, go and hand sew it. <laughs> because what I'm going to do is I'm going to make... I'm going to sort of... I'm sort of going to pin that and then I'm going to right on that, just pin it right on that seam. I'm just going to do right on the seam, I'm going to do a machine stitching because this will be hidden on the front. I'm just going to, you don't have to worry about that. 
I'm just going to top, I'm just going to do a tiny little stitch, pull this over to enclose that raw edge, and then I'm just going to just do a tiny little stitch right on the stitch line. Just right on there. Just pull that down enough. Just pull it down enough. Just do a tiny, tiny little stitch. Just to, just to um, secure this bodice. I'm going to do that on the back, and I'm going to do that on the front. Um, yeah, you're going to pull. You want to pull that top stitching out. So because then what we're going to do? That's just to, to sort of secure this. If you want to hand sew it and and do it really proper, you can. Because then the next and the final thing is we're going to take our binding. I'm going to show you how to do this in the next step. And all we're going to do is we're going to stitch it along there with matching thread, knotting our ends. I'm going to I'm going to show you how I'm going to stitch this together. Um, and then just knot our ends and our tea towel's done. But so for now, just to, just to um, secure that inside edge, I'm just going to go stitch that tiny, tiny little stitch just to, just to catch my lovely fold and enclose that raw seam. So I've, I've uh, stitched my bodice to, to the, um, the skirt. And on the inside, I've done that little bit of stitching right along that line, just so it's a, t a tiny little bit of stitching there. But that's going to be covered up. Be and our, look, oh, so sweet. Um, what I've done is, you can by all means use ribbon. Um, you can make a self-tie out of this. This is the easiest and quickest way that I, I figured out how to do it. What I've done is I've taken my actual bias tape binding, and I've sewn, again, with the back side, the larger side, to the back. I've just taken two, two lengths, about 28 inches long. I've taken two lengths, and I've stitched from the back, with the back side on the back and the front. I've just stitched along and, and enclosed that, here it is, you know, here it is open. Here it is open. What I've done is just kept it on the fold and I've stitched right along the edge and making a, a ribbon tie. About 28 inches long and then I've just knotted the ends. That's all. I've just knotted to the end of it. Nice, nice sturdy knots, not going to come out. And there's our ties and how I'm going to attach them is I'm going to find the middle of our tie, which is about there, and then with the um, the nice side, not the stitched side, not the the uh, bigger side, with the nice side, just go to the middle, put it right on the middle of the bodice, the front middle of the bodice, just pin that there. Oh, it's, it's hard because the interfacing. Oh my, yeah. Just pin that there, and then what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to, I'm going to do it in the red, just, I'm going to go right on top of that other stitching. I'm just going to stitch that from on the top and on the bottom. And there we have our ties. We're going to have one on this end, and we're going to have one on that side, and I'm going to do the exact same thing on the back, and our little tea towel, apron, dress, pretty, whatever it is, is done. So I'm just going to go and I'm just going to stitch on this, this binding, our little tie, our little bodice trim, um, and have the edges out, just find the middle of it, and then our, uh, it'll be done. So I'll, I'll just show you. Oh, I had, I, I just sort of figured this out because the other ones I had done four. I had sort of made four ties, and then as you can see, <clears throat> let me show you. I had done the four, hold on, I had done the four ties, and then I just stitched them on. I didn't stitch it all the way across, and it was a little bit fiddly. It was just a little bit fiddly. Um, it worked well. I had top stitched that decoratively on this one, um, but I had just done four ties, and then I'm thinking, well, why do I have to do four ties? Make it easy for myself, and also add a little bit of interest on the bodice, so I'm just going to go and stitch that. So, I've attached my binding my uh, bias binding to my front. I've top stitched it along the top and along the edge there on the front and the back. Oh, it's so cute. And then what you do is you just tie it 
and then make a lovely little bow on your oven or your dishwasher or wherever you want to put them or your your kid I don't know your dog and because it is and it's sweet look at that oh my word it's so cute <laughs> it's ridiculous <laughs> It's ridiculous. I said before in the beginning, you won't even want to use them. I mean, who's going to wipe their grubby heads? I mean, can you imagine your husband coming along with his greasy paws? <gasps> Kill him. Kill him. Anyway, there's our little tea towel, um, little dress in honor of my beautiful, lovely little granddaughter. I have, I have seven little beautiful granddaughters. Oh, the dear little girls. Um, but our newest one, my lovely little, little girl, little sweet girl. Um, Purchase tea towel, little tiny bit of fabric and interfacing. And as I said before, you don't need to mess about with buttons or buttonholes or Velcro or snaps or grommets or, you know, a tool or a hammer or anything like that. That's why I was trying to figure out, because I, I, I actually have, um, well, I have shown you in the, in, the, in the beginning, I've actually made hanging tea towels, which are a little bit more practical than this. This is just so pretty. Um, I, just, I, just, I just went to town. Um, this is a, this is actually a little bit more practical. I mean, I like the linen ones myself, um, but this doesn't have any of the embellishments. This one, um, as I was saying in the beginning, this one I made. I was it was my um, it was my sort of a prototype. I didn't put any interfacing in this one, and I made it smaller. It's quite sweet actually, with the little pockets. Um, but I quite like it with the interfacing. I, I think it's it's nice. Um, either or, and this one. Um, this one, the gray and the pink one that I made. Uh, oh, it's just ridiculously so pretty. <laughs> Who would wipe their hands? Anyway, I, I really loved making these now. I now I have a million little t tea towels, um, little dresses. I really enjoyed it. I hope you will enjoy making them. What a fabulous little present. As I said in the beginning, I'm concentrating on little presents for to, to be given um, to people. And um, this would be one of them, a girly girl for a little cottage chic, little, um, little kitchen. You can go to town, a tea towel and a scrap of fabric so I, and some bias binding. I hope you enjoyed this, folks. Thanks again for tuning in to me. Okay, bye.